Hello guys, welcome to another Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi Battles brought to you by none other than Repel, myself. Now before I get right into this battle, I do have a quick and huge favor to ask all of you if you guys can just leave that thumbs up to show a little support for this channel, obviously. This channel, well, wouldn't be this channel without you guys, so please, without any hesitations if you guys can leave that thumbs up I would greatly appreciate it obviously these videos are definitely for you my viewers and not for me so moving on we're up against opponent Josie and um, I have to say this was a very close battle this was a 1-0 match so I'm not gonna spoil who won nor who lost but it was definitely a very close match if you guys like close matches like this Please, please, please stay till the very end because this battle was a very close match. So I'm just going to get right into this battle now. Josie is going to lead off with the Exit Drill. A great lead. Rapid Spinner, Hazards, you name it. Straight off the bat, I don't know what to out on because honestly, I'm kind of... I'm kind of greedy. I want to just set up my sweep right here, right now. So he does go for a Stealth Rocks, and you know, it's not like Hippowdon can go for Rabbit Spin or anything, but that's not the point. You know, whatever. I'm just going to go for, well, Curses. <clears throat> and um, I don't think anything this Extra Shield can really do except to go for Stealth Rocks. So that is exactly what this Extra Shield is going to do. Now here comes a Charizard, and um, this Charizard might be a Charizard Y. So if it's Charizard Y, it can do two things. It can set up the sun, and it can go for Solar Beam. And Solar Beam is going to hurt quite a lot. However, I am confident that Hippowdon can live one Solar Beam. Because guys, it's Hippowdon. It's boogers. If you guys are new to my channel, then let me introduce Hippowdon. Hippowdon is probably one of my favorite bulky sweepers of all time. He's incredibly bulky. He'll live... A fucking solar beam coming from not just Charizard but Mega Charizard Y and he will retaliate back with a Stone Edge so that's right I do carry Stone Edge perfectly for to counter any flying type Pokemon in this case the Charizard Y now the only thing that is more threatening than the Charizard is probably the Vaporeon which my opponent does have and you will switch into but I'm thinking it is in the sun. The skull is not going to do too much, so I figured let's just stay and go for uh, slack off. Unfortunately, he does get that burn. But honestly, I don't really care it too much because I have had successful sweeps with Hippowdon, even if it's burned. So long as I just keep racking up more curses. Yeah, burn is a you know it's sort of a bitch. You know, it cuts my attack by half and. I do lose a little bit HP over time, but it's not too big of a deal. Here comes a Hydreigon, and um, I'm just going to go for another Slack Off. So obviously, the point still can't really do too much in the sun. Now this Hydra Hydreigon, if it's like Choice Specs and Draco Meter, it's going to do a lot. It's going to be, his attacks are going to be even more powerful. But turns out he didn't go for Draco Meter, he went for the Dark Pulses. And that's great, because I can still take Dark Pulses really well even if it's choice specs. So, as you'll see, uh, nothing can really harm Boogers, actually. Boogers have massive defenses and special defenses. So, he can't really do anything to me, however, he can go for flinches. He can keep spamming Dark Pulses in hopes to flinch me. But even one more Dark Pulse isn't gonna do too much to me, so I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep staying in, you know? I already went for Curses twice. But following his first flinch, he gets another flinch. So he flinches me twice in a row, and unfortunately, that will take me to very low HP, where I can't even go for a recovery anymore. So I was planning to go for a slack off, but you know he flinched me the second time, so there's nothing I can really do too much about it. So unfortunately, Booger goes down a little bit too early, thanks to those flinches. Now I'm going to send out the Hitmon Top, and I can scare him out with a close combat, or I can wrap spin those rocks away. But keep in mind guys, my opponent does have an Aegislash. Aegislash is Ghost type. So here I'm actually going to do a double switch, expecting him to uh, basically spin block me or fighting block me. And I'm going to go into my Sableye, which is a great, great 
Aegis Slash counter, because Will-O-Wisp will hit this Aegis Slash even if he goes for King's Shield. Now he does switch out, that gives me a very, uh, that gives me an idea that this Aegis Slash is not a special Aegis Slash, it's actually a physical Aegis Slash. So he does go into his Hydreigon, which he obviously doesn't mind getting burned because this Hydreigon is a special attacker. And um, I do not want to get hit by like a Drago Meteor or something, but I'm going to go for a substitute just to scout what he's going to get trapped into. Because it is confirmed that he is Choiced. Whether he is Choice Scarf and Choice Specs, I'm not too sure, but he is in fact Choice. And he locks himself into Draco Meteor, which is fantastic because Draco Meteor will drop his special attack by two stages. So I can keep substituting until, well, he drops his special attack you know, ridiculously low, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for another substitute, very obvious of me, and honestly, my opponent should just switch out by now, because, like, like I said, like, his Draco Meteors are going to do less and less each turn, because he's trapped using Draco Meteor. And most Sableye, including mine, obviously has Recover, so I don't mind using Substitute and then going for Recover, so... Actually, I think my opponent should, what he should have done was switch out a little bit earlier because this burn damage is not doing this Hydreigon a favor. So, finally, he knows now he should switch out and he's going to go into Gallade. And I'm thinking, sweet, Gallade is another physical attacker. Like, there's no way Gallade will appreciate getting burned as well. So, I was very, very surprised that my opponent would switch into Gallade. And uh, here I just went for will o but of course I miss, so I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not too lucky in this battle. I have to be honest with you. I mean, those two uh, flinches from Dark Pulses, like, threw Boogers off way too early, and, you know, I just missed my will o -Wisp, so I don't want to get hit by a knockoff. So I'm going to switch into, uh, yeah, the Mega Aerodactyl, and my Mega Aerodactyl is a very special Mega Aerodactyl. It's more of like a stall-breaking Aerodactyl, because it has like Roost and Taunt and Stealth Rocks. Now I could have actually went for Stealth Rocks here, or an Aerial Ace, expecting the Glade to switch, you know, to stay in. But honestly, I wasn't sure, like perhaps Glade could still stay in and go for like, you know, Ice Punch or Thunder Punch. So I just want to play it safe. Unfortunately, I did not get the chance to go for the Stealth Rocks. Here, I actually could go for a Stealth Fox again, but I was really fearing that he might start setting up with Swords Dances. So, instead of going for the uh, Stealth Fox, I went for a Taunt. But instead of my opponent for going for Swords Dance, he straight up went for the attack. And luckily, I lived it with 3 HP. Because I'm a different Aerodactyl. I have a lot of investment in HP. So, yeah, it's a very strange Aerodactyl, but I really like it like that. Now he does go for the Shadow Sneak, and it's not going to do too much to Rotom, and I did taunt this Aegis Slash, so he can't use King's Shield anymore. So I'm just going to go for like my, you know, strongest attack. Or not even the strongest attack, I actually here, I believe I just went for the Shadow Ball. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's not going to do anything to Hydreigon, but it does a little bit, and it drops the Special Defense, so that's kind of good, right? And he gets burned, but I don't think I can stay in because this Hydreigon might outspeed me and he'll just kill me, you know, with like a Draco Meteor or Dark Pulse. Well, I went into Hitmon Top now expecting either a Dark Pulse or a Draco Meteor. Obviously, I would much prefer getting hit by Dark Pulse, but if he does go for a Draco Meteor, which he does, I know I can live it because I do have Assault Vest on my Hitmon Top. And honestly, I think every one should have an Assault Vest on a Hitmon Top. Hitmon Top is just, it's a great. Uh, assault Vest user. Now here, I actually can go for a Mock Punch, but I know for a fact he can't kill me with another Draco Meter since his special attack was dropped. Unless he gets a critical. So I took this opportunity to go for a Rapid Spin. However, yeah, he gets that critical. So this Hydreigon is just so damn, like, I, I was just so frustrated, you know? Like, he gets crits and he gets flinches with this Hydreigon, and it ruined my plan. If I knew that he was going to get a critical on the Hitmon Top, I would have just went for a Mock Punch on the Hitmon Top and just killed the Hydreigon. But no, he gets a critical, so I can't spin away my Rocks anymore. My last Rapid Spinner is gone. Regardless, I just went for the recover on my Sableye. You know, my Sableye has Prankster. Priority healing is like the best, guys. 
And um, even so, his Draco meters are still doing quite a lot. But finally, Hydreigon does go down. But damn, it was so hard, so hard to take out this Hydreigon. Now, he sends out the Glade once again. And finally, I land my Will-O-Wisp. So there you go, Glade. Suck it, right? That was my initial thought. However, this Glade does have the Flumber. I'm like, God freaking damn it. So at least we know it's not a, you know, non-mega. I mean, it is a it is a non-mega, so we know it's not a mega delay. He knocked off my leftovers, and he keeps using knockoff, even though he's not choice. So we can tell that he probably only has knockoff, close combat, which Sableye is immune to, and Zen Headbutt, which Sableye is also immune to. So he has can't really do anything except for knockoff. He did knock off my leftovers, but you know, it's like, it doesn't really matter too much, you know, because I still have recover. I went for the second Will-O-Wisp anyways, it doesn't land on the Gallade, it actually lands on the Vaporeon, but eh, that's okay. Now, sometimes Vaporeons do have Heal Bell. So, I just went for the sub 2, let's see what he's gonna do. Maybe he'll go for Heal Bell, maybe go for Wish, turns out he has Toxic. That's very interesting, because once you see Toxic on a Vaporeon, you know for a fact they don't have Heal Bells. Because most Vaporeons, you know, four moves are... Wish, Protect, Scald, and Heal Bell or Toxic. It's either Heal Bell or Toxic, give or take. In this case, he took away his Heal Bell and gave him Toxic, so... Yeah, I mean, Toxic is great, but honestly, I think a Heal Bell would be so much better, especially in this battle. Now, his Skulls are breaking my substitute. Naturally, they should be. Skulls are pretty powerful, coming from Vaporeon. So, uh, I'm just like, well... I'm not really sure what I should do here, uh, you know, like, half my team are kind of dead, I mean, half of his team are also dead too, but it's really dangerous here, and uh, here, I just prayed that I didn't get burned, and luckily I didn't, and I uh, here I just went for a Nightshade, just to kind of, um, pressure him, yeah, I want to pressure my opponent to use Wish on the Vaporeon, so that I can get a free switch to something else, hoping that he would actually go for a Wish and not attack me, I'm going to go into Venomoth now. But what I should have done was switch into Venomoth much earlier when he went for Toxic, but that's okay. Turns out he did go for the Scald, and yeah, with Rock's damage, Venomoth is not going to appreciate that. Luckily, he didn't get a burn. Nothing that matters because my Venomoth is actually carrying the Lumberry. Now, uh, I don't think I can take another Scald, but just to be safe, I'm going to go for Quiver Dance. And I'm so glad he went for Protect. Thank God he went for Protect because that gives me a free turn to go for Quiver Dance. And after one Quiver Dance, I actually might live a Skull. But then I thought, it's really not necessary for me to keep setting up, simply because he does have that Aegislash, and Aegislash obviously has that Shadow Snake, which can revenge kill me. So instead of, you know, mindlessly going for Quiver Dances, I just like, alright, you know, uh, a plus one Bug Buzz will finish off the big point, so that's good. But that leaves my Venomoth in a very... Uh, difficult situation here. He's just gonna get revenge kill very easily. Now there's a very good chance I might live this. Very, very low chance actually, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not doing too well in terms of luck in this battle, so. Back into my uh, Sableye. Turns out his priority actually outspeeds my priority, so we can tell that this um, Aegis Slash has some investment in speed. But even his Shadow Sneak won't kill me. And now I'm gonna go for the Will-O-Wisp. Now I did outspeed him, so then that that means that he didn't go for Shadow Sneak. He actually goes for the Iron Head. But keep in mind, guys, I did burn him. But look at this. He gets a critical. So, yeah, I'm just so glad my uh, Will-O-Wisp did land. Because I would not like to get hit by a critical Iron Head. So... Extra Geo is coming out, and, um, you know, I'm just thinking, like, okay, what could this Extra Geo really do to Sableye? I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Extra Geo. It's a very powerful Pokemon, and most people should have one. However, I'm a Sableye, I have priority burn, and once you burn an Extra Geo, like, they can't do anything else. Surprisingly, he does go for the Earthquake. I mean, not the Earthquake, the Rock Side, and not the Earthquake. So I'm thinking that he's just overprojecting a little. He doesn't want to, uh, you know... He doesn't want he doesn't want me to send out my Rotom Wash. 
But like I said, I'm just gonna go for the substitute. But he gets a critical, so I'm like, God damn it! Of course, my my substitute would fade because he got a critical. So I'm like, all right, let me go for another substitute. Now I might live a non-critical earthquake. So we'll see, right? We shall see. Because he keeps using earthquake, fine by me. You know, I have recover, and he is slowly getting burned. But turns out, even a non-critical earthquake actually kills my substitute. This is a very powerful situation. It might just be like, I don't know, adamant nature or something. So, I just went for the, uh, recover, and he misses rock slide. Not that it matters, you know, because he is burned, so it's not gonna do too much. Now that I think about it, I'm just like, hmm, he actually might go for earthquake here. And, um, yeah, you know, I get hurt by rocks. That kind of sucks. But, he does go for earthquake, and yeah. He ha is he's not a mold-breaking extra drill so that's pretty funny and uh his best attack is rock slide but keep in mind guys he is burned so it's not gonna do too much and i went for hydro pump but of course i missed so yeah this is prolonging the battle a little bit longer than necessary but uh thankfully he misses his own rock slide so i can finish him off so finally extra drill going down and i think my opponent has um Two more Pokemon left, yes, the Aegislash and the Gallade, while I have three. I have the Rud and Wash, Aerodactyl, and Sableye. But keep in mind, guys, my Aerodactyl is only sitting at three HP, and my opponent already set up his Stealth Rock, so technically my Aerodactyl is gone as well. Now, his Iron Head does absolutely nothing, since Rotom Wash is electric and watery, so he will resist Steel-type moves four times, and uh, he does go for the Shadow Sneak, but yeah. He's burned, so I love, honestly, I love burning shit. Like, I love it. I see anything, I'll just burn it. <laughs> and that is just great. So, Rotom, cleaning up both Exodrill and Asia Slash. Let's see if I can kill Gallade too. Turns out this Gallade doesn't have Shadow Sneak, which is fantastic, but even my Choice Specs Hydro Pump can't kill. And he will finish me off, so. This is my opponent's last Pokemon, the Gallade, while I have two Pokemon left. The Sableye and my 3 HP Aerodactyl, which is actually sort of dead, if you really think about it. Because, you know, Stealth Rocks. I went for the Recovery, just to be safe. I do not want to get hit by a Critical. And for a fact, we know... Oops, sorry. <laughs> and for a fact, we know that this Gallade obviously has no other move but Knock Off for my Sableye. So I can confidently just go for a Nightshade, and that will take care of this Gallade. Leaving me with just my Sableye and, well, I guess my Aerodactyl. But like I said, the Aerodactyl is sort of dead already. So, there you have it. It's it's essentially a 1-0 match, but thank you, Josie. That was very that was a very intense battle, and honestly, it was a lovely team, and I was very honored to fight you. So please, guys, if you guys like this close match, leave a thumbs up. And also, make sure to comment and subscribe. I shall see you next time.